we were all just kind of like in awe of that moment. I just remember just being like, do I believe what I'm seeing? Just absolute shock and awe. What a ridiculous night. What a, what a ridiculous night. An incredible atmosphere at Providence Park. The knockout round match between the Portland Timbers and Sporting Kansas City. Someone's season ends tonight. It's Wallace in the box, and he has done it! The Timbers break through! Tim Melia wobbled a little bit. He's not going to be able to continue in this match. Second cross in, and it's the equalizer. Kevin Ellis stuns the crowd at Providence Park. Namath at the byline. Christian Namath has given Aspria, Tomori, he has scored! The Timbers have equalized with three minutes to go! Maxi Rudy has breathed life back into Providence Park and has sent the Timbers to penalty kicks. I don't know that people remember that, that Maxi Rudy's goal is the latest goal in MLS history, 118th minute. The Timbers were two minutes away from their season ending in extra time, and then boom. Having Portland tied up so late, that can be kind of a crushing moment to a team. But we have a history of penalty kicks in Kansas City, and we've come out on top. So we were feeling pretty good going into that penalty shootout. When you snag a late goal to take it to penalties, there's this sense of, all right, this is, uh, this is meant to be. I'd have probably realized the drama that was going to uh, ensue. I grew up in the Northwest. I'm used to sports teams disappointing me, so I was not confident at all going into penalty kicks. We got together, and Caleb Porter, our coach at the time, uh, handed out the list and said, hey, these are the first five guys shooting. And he read off the names, and Reggie and I were kind of looking at each other like, you sure you got this right, man? You make subs in games, so sometimes maybe some of those guys aren't available. But John actually had a very good sense for penalty kick uh, shootouts. Kimpin had a sheet that supposedly had where guys go, but there's probably not much on Liam Ridgewell and Nat Borchers and where they've gone in their history. There's a lot of different statistics that have been done around penalty kicks, but there's some things that are secret sauce that we keep to ourselves. Diego Valeri will take first for the Timbers. Valeri is like our captain, he's our talisman. Valeri is saved by Kimpin! It was the first one and I missed it, so I was thinking about my mistake. Missing our first penalty, I was thinking it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough one. Now Benny Failhaber, five for five in the regular season, he finishes and gives KC a one nothing lead. You have to be confident when you take a PK. It's hard though; it's nerves. You get up there, and the distance between the penalty spot and the goal looks a heck of a lot farther than 12 yards. When Nat stepped up, he was so decisive. There wasn't any sort of question. He's like, I'm going to bury this. I'm going to just stick into the corner. And then we did that salute. I think it just brought a lot of the energy back. It wasn't just that he scored. It was the way he scored it that mattered. The Timbers Army is no fan of Dom Dwyer. <laughs> Save by Kawarse! So it was nice to have him get stuffed. Liam Ridgewell for the Timbers, who slots home coolly. Graham Susi, back on level terms. Now the team's first ever captain, Jack Dewsbury. He wasn't a regular starter, but he was still like Captain Jack. You know, that's what we called him. Dewsbury sends it into the Timbers Army. To miss, especially being the fourth guy with only a couple shooters to go, it runs through your mind. The season's over because of you. Matt Beasler. Penalty kick shootouts, momentum shifts really quick. Arudi scores! Paulo Nagamura. Jorge Villafania saved by Kempin! And now Kansas City can win it. I feel like there was multiple times in that shootout we were gonna win. It just felt like we were so close. Kevin Ellis. And it's off the post! We go on! And now the pressure on KC. Sony Mustabar. One more round, Darlington Nagby. Pressure back on Kansas. Jacob Peterson, we're going to a ninth round. Anytime you're in sudden death, you miss a penalty kick, you think it's over. Elvis Powell, saved by Kempin.
This wasn't the first time they had an opportunity to win it. And so when they came up the second time, it was almost like, all right, we had our one chance. We got out of that one unscathed, but to do it twice is, you know, probably not realistic. Saad Abdul Salam, a rookie. Another chance for KC to win it. We had been planning to not talk when the game ends, to let the pictures do the talking. And I'm thinking, all right, this is their second chance to end it. They're, they're gonna end it. You know, I see Adam diving the wrong way and I see the ball going, you know, into that corner. And I'm, I just thought, all right, that, that's it. You know, that, that's gonna be it. When Saad stepped up, I knew exactly where he was going. I think everyone on our team did. Once it hit that post and was going across, I wanna say I celebrated, hands up in the air, and then... Comes off the inside, really quick in mind, oh, it's going in. Then it ricochets again, and for a split second, I thought it was gonna hit Adam and go in just absolute shock and awe. It seemed to just defy physics. And it came off both posts and came out. Are you kidding? Unbelievable. You know, the science behind it, when you think of a right footer that's bending it to the left corner, it hits the left post, must be spinning a certain direction. And so when it ran across the line and didn't go in, we all just looked at each other in disbelief. I'm just being like stunned, like unable to move. I guess like, do I believe what I'm seeing? That's like the slowest times ever <laughs> moved. You have to think at that moment in time that it's your, it's your night. I kind of get goosebumps talking about it, but it's just like you knew that we caught lightning in a bottle at that moment. Un unreal, unreal. I mean, the margins, you know, if it's an inch either way, the game's probably over. I thought, no, no, no way. And then there's this jubilation amongst the crowd and the team that we're still in this. When you miss those, and you start to think, maybe that's going to come back to haunt us. George Foshive for the Timbers. The 10th and final field player. Cool from the rookie. And now it's the 11th round goalkeeper versus goalkeeper. This is remarkable drama. It almost felt like there was something in the air, for sure. Didn't know what it was, but we still had to finish it off. Adam Kawarase versus John Kempen. tough to look back, really had two chances to, to win it. Any sort of luck that would have happened, but the game of soccer is cruel sometimes. I've seen a lot of things happen before, but that was, uh, that was like a dagger into the heart because it was right there, and that was a difference at the end. That was the one that uh, ultimately killed us. I mean, you couldn't have hit it any closer without it being a goal. For a rookie to be in that spot, you, you feel for him. I've been on the good side and the bad side uh, of, of penalty shootouts doesn't make it any better. It still felt terrible, but that's just the way it goes. We are, of course, disappointed, but we give everything that night. It was an unlucky situation. The weird thing I, I think about, it doesn't make any sense, but I almost feel like it's quantum physics or something, like the willpower of the Timbers army. Move some molecules of air and push that ball off the post. You know, I, I can't explain it. Something happened, like the soccer gods were like, oh, you know what, actually, flip the coin, we're gonna go to Portland. When we were done and we were celebrating our championship, I think we went back and we were all just kind of like in awe of that moment and, and what, like, what the heck happened? It was pure ecstasy. We all just took off. That spurred us on yeah, to you know, bigger things for, for the rest of that playoff run. The 
best part for me was seeing our fans stick with us through thick and thin. To go through the hard times uh, and come out on top the way we did in 2015 definitely meant a lot for me in my career. That's a pretty emotional thing for a lot of folks. That atmosphere, that night, still to me is the best that I've seen in my career covering sports. There are so many little plot lines in, in that match that make this one of the best games in, in MLS history. What a ridiculous night. What a, what a ridiculous night.